So I'm in the process of giving four examples of demonstrating what this goon knew about the rules and regulations of the sport of Formula One. In the 2021 Abu Dhabi fix, he went into the stewards appeal at the end of the race and presented that the purpose of Article 48.12, the unlapping procedure when you deploy a safety car and there happened to be lapped cars in situ, the purpose of that regulation was to get those lapped cars out of the way of the race between the leaders. I'm, going, I'm giving four examples of his conduct where it demonstrates that's not the truth. This man's a liar. That's a fact. So we have the Spanish Grand Prix of 2019 and there's three others. But I'm just going to go back to the Spanish Grand Prix of 2019. If you've not seen the video that I've already done about that, that will be in the thumbnail that you can click on at the end of this one. But I've taken you through what he does there. This time, I'm just going to give you a bit more context. We're going to see how many laps it actually takes. Because if you go back to Abu Dhabi 2021, at the moment in time that Nicholas Latifi crashed, Lewis Hamilton had 5.4 laps remaining of that Grand Prix before he was crowned race winner and with it 2021 world champion. That's what Lewis Hamilton had left. 5.4 laps remained for Lewis Hamilton at that point in time. And yet, Martin Brundle and David Croft said there's bound to be a couple of racing laps left. There's bound to be a couple. Which would have meant that within the time frame of 3.4 laps of Abu Dhabi, which isn't the longest of circuits, it's about average in terms of the circuits that they use for the F1 calendar. Within 3.4 laps, they will have had to, and we saw that Latifi's car catch fire, they'd have had to deal with the fire on Latifi's car, remove the car from track, clear up the debris, check the barriers, carry out the unlapping procedure, and that included keeping that safety car on track for a further lap to enable those lap cars to catch the back of the pack, or at least give them the opportunity to try to. And all that would have had to have been done within 3.4 laps in order for a couple of racing laps. It would have had to have been done in 4.4 laps in order to get one racing lap. And the average, which I've already demonstrated in a previous video, but I'm going to do it again because I know that people don't look through the back catalogue of videos that I've done. The average is five and a half laps. But let's see how long this incident takes in Barcelona, 2019, the Spanish Grand Prix. And uh, pay special attention to Martin Brundle and David Croft's commentary. David Croft has been a commentator of the sport for in excess of 10 years. That was at the point in time Abu Dhabi 2021 took place. He was commentating at the Australian Grand Prix in 2012, where he stated the reintroduction of the unlapping procedure in safety car situations. 2012 Australian Grand Prix. David Croft said that, and I'll evidence that as well. Martin Brundle, at the time of Abu Dhabi, 38 years of experience in Formula One, 10 years as a driver. At that point in time, 28 years of being the presented expert of Formula One. That was Martin Brundle. This is them two commentating on this incident. For now, they get amnesia about all of their previous experience when it comes to Abu Dhabi 2021. So I'm experiencing poor internet at the moment, so I'm hoping this is going to work. What you see here is Lando Norris and Lance Stroll. These are the cars that cause the incident that requires the safety car. I'm going to play this forward and you'll see the orange dot of Norris and the pink dot of Stroll. And you'll listen to what's being said about it as well. So here we go. On to the soft compound tyre. Expecting Hamilton to come in after we saw the state of his tyres, but they're pitting Bottas first. So looking now. So here, between turns one and two, okay, pay special attention to these dots in between turns one and two. You've got the orange dot that's over the top of the pink dot of Stroll at the moment. It's all going to unfold. 
Now to where Charles Leclerc is, he's just rounding the final turn and making his oh, way. Yeah. Adana, past that commentary box, Lando Norris has gone off, Lance Stroll has gone off with him in the racing points. Okay, so that is what has happened. Stroll has gone off into the gravel, Norris went off into the gravel with him but kept the car going, went back onto the track, dragged gravel onto the track and then kind of ended up on the outside of turn two. Stroll is going to need his car recovering with a crane out of a gravel trap and Norris's car needs to be dragged back into kind of the back end of turn two. Both cars can be recovered simultaneously, um, but the, the track's going to be need to be swept because of the gravel on it. Overall, this incident should take a similar amount of time as it would take to deal with the Abu Dhabi 2021 situation. Uh, if anything, due to the fire on Nicholas Latifi's car and the need to actually get a fire extinguisher, put the fire out and then sweep up the fire extinguisher debris, Abu Dhabi may take slightly longer. OK, at this moment in time, having had these two cars just have that incident, Lewis Hamilton is at this location on the track approaching turn seven. Now, this is a 16 turn track. Now, in terms of how much of the lap he has covered, well, I would suggest it's less than half. When we switch this over to track of view, which I'll do now, Sorry about that. I think I said track of view. I meant data view. What we can see on data view is um, this bar along the, the bottom. The left hand side of the bar is the start of the lap. The right hand side of the bar is the end of the lap. And we can see where these dots are. Um, and effectively, they demonstrate how far into that lap each of these cars are. So at this point, relative to the length of the track, Hamilton is about a third of the way around the track at this moment in time. I've rewound it a little bit from what you've just heard and you're going to see where it's got lap 46 of 66 in this top corner. Okay, lap 46 we're on. So Lewis Hamilton's on lap 46. You're going to see it go yellow when there's an incident because in immediately when an incident occurs, you get yellow flags. The immediate reaction is incident, yellow flag, incident, slow down. All right. And then there needs to be a decision made. How are we going to deal with this incident? Can it be cleared use, just using yellow flags? Do we need to um, call virtual safety car? Do we need to deploy a safety car? Or is it that serious that we actually need to re red flag this situation? All right. So let's just have a play of this through. Hamilton to come in after we saw the state of his tyres, but they're pitting Bottas first. So looking now to where Charles Leclerc is, he's just rounding the fight. So, yellow flag, the incident's happened. And at this moment in time, Hamilton is about 0.4 of the way into his lap 46. So there's 0.6 of a lap remaining, all right, for Hamilton. That's a, a good approximation, I would say, if we look at this bar at the bottom. OK, I would say it's 0.4 of the way along that lap. Um, and then let's just. Um... Final turn and making his oh, way. Yeah. Adana, off. past that commentary box, Lando Norris has gone off. Lance Stroll has gone off with him in the racing points. And I wonder if this means a safety car. Norris has managed to get back on the track. I'm buffering at the moment. As I said, poor internet connection, but um, hopefully it won't. Won't last too long. Track, there's a lot of gravel as he goes right across the track there. Bottas so is ahead of Leclerc. Just to let you know after that pit stop. A virtual safety car or a full safety car will give a cheap pit. And there you go, safety car. You can see, despite the buffering, you can see that the safety car has been decided to be deployed by race control. Okay. So bearing in mind, let's let's just say, well. From are we going to go on when the incident was, or we, are we going to go on when the race control decide in the form of Michael Massey said we're going to use a safety car to deal with this incident? Let's say it's halfway around lap 46. I think that's fair. We'll go back onto track of view and we'll play this through from track of view and see importantly how long this incident takes up and what decisions Michael Massey takes. I'm going to play this all the way through to allow you to listen to what is said. Often I interject 
but I can see from the comments made, there's some very intelligent people here. There's some very intelligent people and you can understand for yourself exactly what Martin Brundle and David Croft are saying and how it contradicts what they said at Abu Dhabi 2021. Clearly demonstrates that they are part of the fraud. So I'm going to switch back to track of you now, rewind it to that incident and play it forward. Bearing in mind, halfway through lap 46, okay, we'll then see how long it is until racing resumes and see how many laps of this race are taken up by having to deal with a safety incident before they can go racing again. So, well, at this moment in time, Lewis Hamilton's actually at turn five as Norris and Stroll are colliding at turn two. But like I say, we'll be we'll be kind. We'll say he's halfway around this lap, which he's not. But anyway, here goes. Let's uh, let's count the laps. How long will they wait? But that's normally on a wet day in Belgium. And making his oh, way yeah. and down now, past our commentary box, Lando Norris has gone off Lance Stroll, has gone off with him in the racing points. And I wonder if this means a safety car. Norris has managed to get back out on the track. There's a lot of gravel as he goes right across the track there. Bottas so is ahead of Leclerc, just to let you know after that pit stop. A virtual safety car or a full safety car will give a cheap pit stop now to anybody. Safety who comes cars in. coming out, Martin. So that plays into Hamilton's hands, then, doesn't it? Okay, Lando, do you have any damage? Do you have any damage? I'm sorry, guys. I'm out. Can you bring the car back? Can you bring the car back? No, I can't. I'm sorry, guys. I did say that I wouldn't interject. Can you bring the car back? Can you bring the car back? Did you uh, hear Nicholas Latifi's race engineer request that of Nicholas Latifi? Oh, it's gone silent, hasn't it? It's gone silent. Anyway, I'll try not to interject now. But these things stand out. Strange that. You'd rather think then it might have been Lando Norris's fault, that incident from the way he was speaking there. But the safety car now deployed, and this is going to close the whole field up as through turn one went Lance Stroll and Lando Norris. Norris around the outside, and as he went into turn two, Lance Stroll's got the advantage. Norris was trying to squeeze through, and yeah, he took out the racing point and himself. I think uh, Stroll probably thought he would yield, he'd give up on that, the McLaren behind him. Hamilton has pitted the race leader and gets that, well, cheap pit stop because he can come in and not lose as much time in comparison to others who have just pitted. Verstappen, for instance, uh, Vettel, for instance, Bottas, uh, for instance. Leclerc, of course, can now pit as well, but he's going to lose a place to Verstappen and to Vettel probably by making that pit stop, but, but they're all going to concertina together and start again when the two cars have been cleared away for the first time in formula one uh, lando norris retires from a grand prix lance stroll's 14 race finishing streak ends today into the pits now comes charles leclerc medium tires going on he's got Ooh, half... nearly an unsafe release there. i think they got away with it he's got half a chance of coming out ahead of his teammate sebastian fettel there is fettel he's actually just gone through so he now goes past Leclerc once again. Better put those tyres on on lap 40. So he's got the same tyres, seven laps fresher. And they'll all be uh, concertinaed up, the alligator behind the safety car. But of course, it, until they catch the safety car, but in any event, you're trundling down the pit lane on the 80 kilometre an hour, 50 mile per hour speed limiter, and your rivals are travelling much less fast at that point. So the order, Hamilton from Bottas, uh, Verstappen, Vettel, Leclerc. And because of the safety car, a burnt Mylander, uh, we see uh, behind the wheel. There's a lot of gravel there. Yeah, copy. Nicely on the safety cue. car's going way too slow. Yeah, uh, but burnt Mylander will think he's throwing 
Uh, that V8 engine Mercedes into the corners, but Hamilton. He's slow you, though. He is slow today. The safety car. He's trying. He's trying to collect the field up. Yeah. They're doing 60, 70 k's around the corners. So, so he's got a job to do to, to close the field up, Martin. But Hamilton's got a job to do in trying to keep temperature into his tyres. That's why he's he, he's so eager. That's why he's hustling the safety car behind him. It might take a while to clear the gravel here to let the uh, the lapped cars pass as well. Uh, Ricardo Perez, Hulkenberg. Right. It might take a while. To, I said I wasn't going to do this. It might take a while to clear the gravel and let the lapped cars pass as well. Now. Oh, thanks for that, Crofty. Um, I thought they didn't have to do that. On the track at tur the start of turn three, where I'm trying to wave, wave my cursor, this is where Lando Norris re-entered the track, dragging a load of gravel with him. Pay attention to this area of the track because there are cars that are streaming by, and until there's a window of opportunity whereby there's a period of time that the marshals can be on there sweeping, they're not going to be allowed on there to sweep. So these cars need to bunch and then that bunch go by that that scene enabling a window of opportunity of a minute and a half two minutes for them to be on track without the risk of further cars flying around that circuit at that point okay so it's unlikely that any marshal is allowed to even start the sweeping operation yet okay so lewis hamilton at this stage it's been one and a half laps since the incident. So we'll carry on. Raikkonen and Giovinazzi all a lap down. Now remind Lewis, he's got to stay within 10 car lengths of the safety car. You're not allowed to drop too far back. This, this is going to be a really interesting restart yeah. from here it's on in. Kind, they can get through, as you can see, they've got their own goat track going through there now, but that gravel to our left on the inside of turn three is not ideally placed at all. No, that caused when Lando Norris uh, tried to get back onto the track and, and limp around, uh, deposited a load of gravel onto the racetrack. We can see this incident uh, once again. Norris on the inside catches that right left wheel of the racing point. And yeah, to blame. Uh, I wouldn't be at all surprised if, if the stewards have a look at this one. He hadn't made the corner. Right. I'm, I'm going to a racing incident on that one. I, in terms of, uh, you know, Lando was well alongside. Danny Kvyat's um, afternoon not uh, being helped by the fact that they, they didn't seem to be ready with the tyres for him there. And in the end... Stacking them, look. Uh, so Danny Kvyat... Apologies for the buffering. It's just Kriya and it. Alex Albon having their race compromised there. And oh, Badly, yeah. just got a bit fingers and thumbs, didn't it? And Magnussen's cleared them. Magnussen and Grosjean, I think, cleared them nicely. Yeah, it's propelled Carlos Sainz up into the points. That was Hamilton's uh, pit stop. And emerging back out into the sunshine again as Lando Norris's McLaren is loaded onto the back. OK, it's only now whereby you've now got a bit of a opportunity but it's still not that much because soon i mean obviously hamilton the safety cars coming around turn 12 and then they'll soon be entering kind of the start finish straight and arriving at turn three so it's still not a big window yet so it's likely they'll hold off until science the last running vehicle in this safety car snake when they're finally caught up will have passed the incident before they get on there to sweep this, when Lewis Hamilton crosses the start-finish line, it will have been two and a half laps since the incident. Of oh, the truck to head back to the Grand Prix, uh, to, the, to the garage. So who does this bring into play for, for various reasons? The, the mix-up at Toro Rosso has kept Fiat in the points, but Albon now out of it. Science is up into 10th. Hulkenberg, who started from the pit lane, now at 12th. Uh, another Hulk chance. Thinking about this stuff. How many cars we lose position? Stay out. Stay out. That's quite an old message. Yeah. Hulkenberg's on the soft tyre. He, he, he might be a bit racy. Uh, See, Crofty here, he's talking about a competitor that might be a bit racy in 12th place. <laughs> oh, Hulkenberg in 12th. He, he's now on the soft tyre. He might be a bit racy. Abu Dhabi 2021. You weren't even considering how racy third might be.
No, they're just back markers. Get them out of the way. What, seventh? Yeah, just, just get him out of the way. No, no, that they all matter, as you were aware, back here at Barcelona 2019. At the end of this as well, Ricardo behind him uh, will be hoping oh, yeah. to get into the points. Oh, not necessarily. I, it, uh, there's Sebastian there. Yeah. Ricardo behind him in 13 will be hoping to get into the points. I thought these back markers, all you wanted to do was get them out of the way. It doesn't matter. Just, just dismiss them. Disregard them. Get them out of the way. No, no. Who wants to get in the points? Funny that, isn't it? Funny that. If I, uh, is it worth trying another set of ties? He's definitely got his thinking cap on today, hasn't he, Vettel? Corinne's got news. Yeah, guys, just looking at who the winners and losers were for that pit stop, I was actually standing by Toro Rosso, and there was a complete, well, there's a communication breakdown, clearly, when, when they didn't realise that the cars were already there. They're just a bit late, and then, as you said, properly compromised them. It's allowed Carlos Sainz to sneak into the points now, so he's got ahead of Albon and, and behind Kabir. Uh, Michael Massey, the FIA race director, until the summer break, at the very least, and... And doing a fine job so far this season and taking over, of course, in, in tragic circumstances after the, the death of Charlie Whiting prior to the Australian Grand Prix. And Lance Stroll not... OK, so now you can see the field is almost bunched. The last running competitor, Carlos Sainz, I say he's the last running, he's in 10th place, but he's the last car in that safety car snake has just passed the incident where there's gravel on the track. So it's now and only now at the earliest where really they would say to the marshals, you can now go on there to sweep that gravel off. That would be the earliest. OK. What they've got to do before they carry out this unlapping procedure is make the conditions safe. So they have to declare that that track, track safe. The, the two cars have to have been removed and put into safe positions and the track has to be safe and when that is, has happened and the clerk of the course has done his checks and says yeah I'm satisfied now that this track is safe then they carry out the procedure and that is to release the cars that have been lapped that are eligible to be released and then carry out one further lap of that safety car to afford those released cars the opportunity of catching the back of the pack to form this snake back up in the correct race order with all of them previously built advantages nullified. Now, as I said in the previous video where I go through this one, the two white dots are the two Williams cars and they are two laps down. They get afforded one lap back. They will not prolong this um, procedure to unwind two laps for them William, Williams cars. That's that's the way they do it. That's that's the way these regulations work. Anyway, I'll let these, this carry on been a good weekend for him at all i th i think stroll thought that he'd he'd got him covered he, yeah. he would yield he'd back off and I th uh, for me norris thought he deserved he'd earned some space from where he'd positioned his car he, he wasn't a, a so how many laps is this this is about three laps from when um lewis hamilton where where lewis hamilton was from the incident for a couple of laps racing, which is what they declared in Abu Dhabi 2021, for a couple of laps racing, they'd have to have done everything by now to then start releasing the lapped Well, the, the lapped cars would have had to have been released by now when doing the extra, um, the extra mandatory lap. See how long these things take. Just, just for the field to bunch, takes a few laps just for the field to bunch, let alone at the same time, you know, they're trying to do what they can about the clear up operation, but they can't do the full clear up operation until the field is bunched to give them this window of opportunity where there's this safe working window. It wasn't a leery move. No. Um, it so wasn't I think, I think I'm giving it six of one, half a dozen of another. Yeah. It wasn't ahead at any time. No, it wasn't, Norris, was but, it, it? but he was close enough in there to, to be in tight, in my view, to be in tight to some space. Others will say, well, look, he wasn't going to get through there. He should lift it off, but that's not what racing driving is all about. I'm not surprised Sebastian Vettel was asking that question about 
pitting again, Martin, but I, because there are no new sets of mm. tyres to stick on, I, I suppose for Ferrari, it's just... No. Sorry about this, buffering. Keep it as it is. Yeah, so the where are there. they? Where are they in the queue? I mean, that pay played beautifully for Lewis's oh, blistered tyre. <laughs> and they didn't bring him in first, either of the two Mercedes, because he'd got 11 seconds. Second lead at the time. He's right at the front of the queue. Bottas has got to be at least six down. Vettel and Leclerc. Eight or nine cars down in the queue, maybe ten cars down in the queue. Well, I mean, they, they, they're going to, they're going to have to release the lapped runners and riders. Yeah. Absolutely right, Crofty. They're going to have to release the lap runners and riders uh, out of this queue before we can get going again. Uh, the, the thing is, when we have the restarts, so just think about rear brake temperatures. Front calipers are getting quite warm. The rear brakes are staying. Cold. It's been stamping on those brakes behind the safety car. But when we get going again, Hamilton, Bottas, Verstappen and Leclerc all are going to be on tyres, Martin, very similar in age. Sebastian Vettel, uh, six laps older uh, than, yep. than those around him. As uh, Lennon Norris walks back with his uh, crash helmet still on. Uh, Apologising, as you heard, to the team on the uh, radio. I think uh, feeling himself that it was his fault. Now the lapped cars may overtake, and there are one, two. So, how many laps beyond? How many laps beyond the incident was it that it took to get to this phase? I think we're about four laps on. Now let's just confirm this on data view. Now let me just—I'm going to um, switch over to data view. And sure enough, lap 50 of 66, lap 50 of 66, and they're approaching the halfway distance around the lap. Listen. Feeling himself that it was his fault. Now the lapped cars may overtake. <laughs> so it was, wasn't it? Four laps on from the moment in time of the incident was the point whereby the incident was cleared and then they can now start carrying out this procedure. Took four laps to deal with that incident in order to make it safe, to declare that track clear, and then say, okay, we can now carry out this procedure. So this lap has to be the lap upon which those cars are released, and then you have to perform another lap. So let's go back to track of view so we can watch this proceed through. And I've just rewound it 10 seconds so you can hear them say once again, and lapped cars may now overtake. Bearing in mind, they're approaching the point where it's four laps on from the incident. As, he, as you heard to the team on the uh, radio, I think uh, feeling himself that it was his fault. Now the lapped cars may overtake. And there are one, two, Eight. three. Yes, well counted. <laughs> Alex Albon. Nico. Apologies for the buffering. It's a state of my internet at the moment, but what can you do? Pause. Pause it in the hope that uh, it can catch up. Here we go again. Hey, Ricardo, Sergio Perez, Kimi Raikkonen, and Antonio Giovinazzi, George Russell, Robert Kubica. Doesn't want to play ball today. Can all now overtake. Now, whether they are going to be allowed to catch up uh, to the back, I'm not quite sure. Well, that's going to sort the uh, restart order out nicely for us, isn't it? That they've elected to do that. Well, this, this is... Whether they're going to be allowed to catch up, I'm not sure. OK. But there's a minimum requirement. Brundle with his... It's good that they've elected to do that. Not in any way optional why they brought this this rule in the the lap cars can overtake when did they bring this rule in crofty we're in 2019 now they bought this rule in in 2012 you stated it in 2012 
we've got the documentations which prove that it was bought in in 2012. And you're still saying, oh, that's why they bought this rule in. Do you remember in football where you used to be able to pass it back to the goalkeeper and the goalkeeper just pick it up? Liverpool used to play like that. Used to go 1-0 up in games and then just pass it along the back four and back to Bruce Grobler and they'd just pick it up and you'd waste half an hour out of a game of football by doing that. Yeah, they stopped that. And seven years on from introducing that rule, they weren't going, oh, um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's good that they've elected to not allow the goalkeeper to pick the ball up in these circumstances. No, 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 that rule's been around for quite some time now. Everybody's aware of it. So just to get out of the way of, of those on the lead lap fighting for position so yeah. that the back markers don't get in the way at a restart. It's one of Charlie Whiting's, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, concepts. Uh... So the back markers don't get in the way of the restart. I thought you said Daniel Ricciardo was going to be fighting for a point scoring position. Is he getting in the way or is he fighting for position? What's going on or are we just contradicting ourselves? Uh... It can be, get a bit frustrating on a very long lap sometimes. But there they are, the eight that were allowed through. And uh, that's, yeah, it's going to give us a nice clean restart. It's not mandatory. It's not absolutely certain. Depends on weather conditions and, you know. There is nothing in the regulations which state there's any different procedure for different weather conditions. The uh, stage of the race that you're at, but... There is nothing in the regulations that state there is a different way of doing this if you're at a different stage in the race. Brundle's just making this up and lying to you. He's lying because he's paid to make the sport of Formula One exciting. They know that there's a massive proportion of the audience that they seek to attract that are ignorant. They have no real clue what's really going on or what the purpose of what is going on is, but they get excited. Oh, I like fast cars. I like the red one. I like the blue one. Good for you. OK, you don't you don't really know what's going on, do you? All right, fine. You you just stay there wearing your orange T-shirt and have a lovely time. Leave the thinking to the rest of us. It seemed a sensible decision right now, didn't it? Because that's energised this race beautifully. It's, it's the concept absolutely spot on. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. You've said it many times over the years. It's a shame they can't just drop back rather yeah. than overtaking and going round again. Uh, but until they sort out a way for the timing screens to, to update. Two experts of the sport presenting the notion of just dropping back so that it doesn't waste this time. That that notion does not work. If it worked, it would have been written into the regulations. It doesn't work because of the locations of each of those cars prior to the incident happening. Who was challenging who prior to the incident happening? Now what? You can't afford a car to now lose a lap on somebody they were previously challenging just to an, due to an incident. And you can't pretend that, oh, well, just say that they're all on the same lap, but don't make them perform that lap. That doesn't work because that car then hasn't had to use that lap's worth of fuel, hasn't had to use that lap's worth of rubber. So if they drop back, now they're in a more advantaged position to attack if they're not designated as being a lap down. So we are, you either fully disadvantage them by making them now a lap down when they previously weren't on the guy that they were was just in front of them that they were trying to catch. Or if you say, well, we'll say that you're on the same lap, not a lap down. Well, you've now completed a lap less. You can push harder because you've got more fuel in the car. You can, um, you know, you don't have to lift and coast, which we're told they sometimes have to do. You can go flat out for the whole lap. And you've got an extra lap's worth of rubber on your tyres enabling you to push harder, you, it skews outcomes. Date so that, uh... Yeah, because we just lose another lap or two, especially, as I say, on a long lap like Spa, for example. So, this is that mandatory safety car lap afforded to those competitors. Four and a half laps completed. And this is the fifth and a half lap, okay? 
So safety car can come in at the end of this lap. It gets a little bit tedious, but uh, we'll take it. We'll take it for now. But if they drop to the back of the field, they're a lap down anyway, um, then they can stay a lap down. There's a gorgeous afternoon here in uh, Barcelona. Martin, sun's out, blue skies, a few wispy white clouds overhead, nice warm temperature in this uh, uh, middle part of May. But if you're talking temperature, tyres and brakes getting very cold on those uh, cars now. Uh, and it's going to be so, so difficult for the drivers after quite a few laps behind the safety car to try and manage those temperatures. So they're in a position... Where we're buffering again. Happy days. Are they far enough out? Of the Where way? the equipment can let them go and overtake and break a bit later. Yeah, they're they're designed and optimised. It's obviously for braking at massively high speed, lots of energy, and they're not particularly good at safety car speed. Absolutely. And if they were, they'd fail very quickly in the Grand Prix. They certainly would. Lewis Hamilton has led every single lap of this race so far. Mercedes uh, with a 1-2 at the moment. If you haven't been with us all season, they've been... Back in 2019, nobody used that criteria to, to, to promote this notion of him then fully deserving to become a world champion because he'd led a few laps. That's a new thing as of 2021. Been one two at the checkered flag in every single race this season, looking for a fifth consecutive one two finish. It would tie their best ever run in Formula One. They did it in uh, 2014 and across 2015 and 2016 as well. Ferrari also managed five one two finishes in a row. The final. Five well, Ferrari managed five one, one two finishes in a five row. races of 2002, but it's under pressure now because the field is so close together. Verstappen's going to feel under pressure. Two Ferraris behind him with DRS and their power down the straight. This brings... This is annoying. Sorry brings them this. all back into the fuel window, of course. Two or three... So, what are we seeing now? Are we seeing these cars fully caught up? Are we seeing Lewis back the pack up, ready to bolt? Because they've done that man mandatory safety car lap. Right, five and a half laps have gone. They've done that mandatory safety car lap. What's happening now, Michael Massey? Race director, Michael Massey, you've released these lapped cars to get them out of the way of the race between the leaders. You've done everything that the regulations say you need to do. You've released them once the clerk of the course has declared the track safe. And then the safety car has remained on track, but it now needs to return to the pits at the end of the following lap. Those regulations state that, don't they, Michael? I mean, just in case you forgot, what we'll do, we'll, let's let's have a check, okay? Um, having overtaken the cars on the lead lap and the safety car, these cars should then proceed around the track at an appropriate speed without overtaking and make every effort to take up position at the back of the line of cars behind the safety car. Well, they've made every effort, yep. Yeah. Whilst overtaking and in order to ensure that this may be carried out safely, the cars on the lead lap must always stay on the racing line unless deviating from it is unavoidable. Unless the clerk of the course considers the presence of the safety car is still necessary, once the last lapped car has passed the leader, the safety car will return to the pits at the end of the following lap. So yes, you have carried out that minimum requirement as stipulated in the regulations, Michael. What's he doing now? Three laps coasting behind the safety car sorts any fuel issues out, so they should be able to go for it. Safety car goes round again because we've got to wait for the lap runners to catch the pack. Yeah. I... Oh, but how long will they wait? Because we've got to wait for the lapped runners to catch the back of the pack. What's he doing now? Oh, he's using 15.3. His overriding authority over the use of that safety car. He can use it by prolonging its use to ensure sporting fairness is restored to all competitors. The 15.3.
He can use it if he doesn't think it's safe to go racing. If it's raining now and there's too much spray and he doesn't think visibility is good enough and there'll be a crash if they go, go racing again, he can keep the safety car on track until he believes the spray has dispersed and it's now safe to race again. Here he's using it on the ground of sporting fairness to each of those competitors, those released cars. Okay? I think as long as you let them go by half a lap, you could get on with it. But anyway, got an it doesn't matter what you think, Brundle. It does not matter what you think. You are paid by the show to lie about it, to hype it up. You're paid to lie to children, you unethical... I'm going to swear when I'm not. I'm going to keep it clean for now. Another lap now, but I think Verstappen will be the man under pressure from the Ferraris. But don't forget the two Ferraris as well, Martin, could also be under pressure from Pierre Gasly behind them. Gasly's on the soft compound tyre. The two Ferraris are on the mediums. Could Gasly, with those racier, grippier tyres, be putting a challenge into the Ferraris as well? This could be a mega restart when we finally get it going. Uh, Karun, down to you. Safety car's coming in at the end of this lap. OK, then, just a quick one. Martin, you're talking about how you know, the safety car did appear to be going a bit slow. I tell you what, I watched that gaggle of cars, the lapped ones, come past me, the likes of Albon, Hulkenberg, and so on. They were of flying past because obviously they had to catch the lap up. Science, you'd be a little, if you were science, you'd be a bit nervous because Albon's going to ride right behind you with a hot set of tyres. But yeah, battle up the front trophy, all to play for. We have seen three cars try and emerge into turn one, uh, side by side by side. Hamilton got the better of that. Fettel lost out. What's going to happen this time around, I wonder? And a new regular Regulation for this year, you don't overtake at the first safety car line. You can't overtake until you cross the line, as they call it, capital L, which is the start uh, and start line. Yeah. Basically, you cannot overtake until that point. So, uh, do you get a five-second penalty if you do, Martin? You know, because that's what Max Verstappen should have got for his car nudging ahead of Hamilton's during that safety car period in Abu Dhabi 2021. Hamilton, he will become the de facto safety car. He controls the pack. The 10 length car rule falls away now. It's Lewis that's in charge and he can bolt just when he likes. But he's got to give the safety car enough time to get out of the road. So when the safety car goes into the lane, Lewis Hamilton can lead the charge to the line. Hamilton from his teammate Bottas, Verstappen from Vettel, from Leclerc, from Pierre Gasly, Grosjean, Magnussen, Fiat, and so Buffering. What do you do? Science, the top ten behind them. The lap runners have all joined the back of the train. Lewis Hamilton is now flying. The lap runners have all joined the back of the train. Sporting fairness to all competitors. Trying to get the jump on the rest as it's like the fastest, longest train you've ever seen going through at uh, that chicane and Hamilton. And we, we go racing again because they couldn't overtake to the cross the start finish line. I'm going to switch to data view to confirm that that was six and a half laps. So if we uh, see that the safety car period is ending. If I zoom in on the end of the track, the safety car bunch, sorry, it's not in good uh, definition at the moment. It's on the so rest, as it's like internet. the fastest, longest train you've ever seen going through at uh, that chicane. And it just switched over to uh, Hamilton start in there. Let me just try and rewind that and see if we can get better definition on here. Safety car ending, as it says there, this is absolutely awful on the internet i'm going to just pause it until i get better resolution finally got better resolution so lap 52 of 66 meaning they cannot start racing until lap 53 of 66. the incident occurred halfway around lap 46. so you have the remainder of lap 46 which is half a lap 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52. And they cannot resume until 53. Six and a half laps of the Spanish Grand Prix. 
were removed from racing. Six and a half laps. And we were generous with that being half laps. It's probably 6.6 .6 laps. 6.6 .6 laps of Spain were lost due to a safety incident. There were only 5.4 laps of Abu Dhabi remaining. Do you think all of the F1 teams that compete in all of these events will have a log of each of these events and how long they take approximately? And their strategists will then be making a judgment call when it comes to determining whether it's likely to be a safety car finish or not. And therefore, whether or not it's worth risking pitting to change onto tyres and potentially losing track position and determining what's more important, track position or tyre compound on the grounds of are we going to see any more racing or do we need to stay out on track because this is going to be a safety car finish. 6.5, more realistically, 6.6 .6 laps of racing were lost in Spain 2019. Michael Massey was the race director. Michael Massey not only performed the mandatory requirements of releasing all of those lapped cars, all eight of them, not just five of eight. He kept that safety car on track for that mandatory one lap. And then he used his 15.3 to keep that safety car on track for yet a further lap. To allow those release cars the chance of catching the back of the pack. And then they went racing again. Even if he hadn't have done that additional lap, which isn't mandatory within the regulations, that was still five and a half laps or 5.6 laps. Abu Dhabi, there were 5.4 remaining. And remember, Nicholas Latifi's car caught fire. They had to deal with that fire. There was no fire to deal with in Barcelona them the lap runners have all joined the back of the train lewis hamilton is now flying trying to get the jump on the rest as it's like the fastest longest train you've ever seen going through uh, that chicane and hamilton seems to have survived the restart but look sebastian Fettel is now under pressure from pierre and there they go again five point sorry 6.5 slash 6.6 .6 laps of racing is wiped out of that race when there's only 5.4 laps of racing remaining in the 2021 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. And Martin Brundle and David Croft, these two that commentated on this, are saying to you all, oh, there's bound to be a couple. This incident, they took 6.6 .6 laps. For there bound to be a couple, they'd have had to do that in 3.4 laps of Abu Dhabi. No chance. They're liars. They're absolute liars. But this is just one example. I'm going to give you three more where Michael Massey made exactly the same decisions. And what does that demonstrate? That demonstrates his knowledge. That demonstrates his appreciation of the regulations and what they are for. Because those release cars were out of the way of that race between the leaders after that one mandatory lap of the safety car. He didn't keep that safety car on the track to ensure that they were further out of the way, did he? He kept it out on the track to restore, restore sport and fairness to all competitors. In the way that you were saying, Daniel Ricciardo in 12th or 13th, wherever he was, 13th, he'll be looking to challenge for a top 10 position. Yeah. He will, if he gets the chance to, once sporting fairness is resumed to him, if he's not left it stranded, adrift of the pack due to a safety incident. The lies that people feed, the lies that the media are feeding to the global watching audience of a sport to condition people to accept a fix. It is truly disgusting. And this is just an example of a sport where we can clearly demonstrate this. And when people see this example happening in a sport, they might start waking up to see all of the other facets of life 
where this same dynamic exists, where the media are lying to each and every one of us to condition us to accept things which are absol absolutely wrong, absolutely and totally wrong. And yet the media present it to us as, a, as if it's normal, as if it's the only possible way and therefore just accept it. It's all OK. Just move on. Just move on. And each time somebody is benefiting out of the situation. Usually a billionaire who's got the money to be able to pay the media so that the media present the narrative that fulfills their desires. And these billionaires are able to influence and control governments, organisations, these governments that are supposed to act on our behalf, the people's behalf, to run our countries for the benefit of the people and not make policies to benefit billionaires, enabling billionaires to make more billions. But that is the level of corruption that we're experiencing in this world. And to the twats who want to come here to troll because they like Max Verstappen, or they've got nothing better to do with their sad little lives than be on their computers looking for aggravation in the comments section. Maybe you should wake up and turn your attentions to those who really impact in the quality of life of each and every one of us. Those with the wealth to pervert society, pervert societal values, to make themselves billions and make our lives far more challenging than they ever need to be. Through out and out corruption. Abu Dhabi 2021 is a clear example that we're going to use to wake the world up. And for those of you that are trying to get in the way of it, step aside. Until next time. Thank you for your time.